to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Thursday, February 18th. Another spectacular day to talk fantasy football with my favorite people, Mr. Every Jason day. Moore and Mike Wright. Uh, I mean, every, every, day is a, every day is a great day to talk fantasy football. You, you are 100% right when you say it's a spectacular day to talk about fantasy football. I was like, man, Andy's right. It is a spectacular day to talk about fantasy football because we are alive and it is a day and that is always the case. So if you're alive and it's a day, then it's welcome a good in. day to talk fantasy football. Yeah, that's I right. I guess that's the uh, I think what he was insinuating there. We have a, a a good show today. We are going to be talking about some shocking stats from Ooh. 2020. Not scary stats, Mike. They're shock. I don't know. Yeah, you could Most have been like, <gasps> that. That's yeah. the sound effect for shocking. Is like, it? it? Jason, help me out here. Great, we have Scott. Thank you. That's <laughs> uh, that's better. Uh, we're gonna talk through some shocking stats from 2020. <laughs> we'll see if there's anything scary uh, in there. Shocktacular. Uh, uh, we have some buy sell on the show today as well. A reminder: head over to ultimatedraftkit.com, get access immediately to the uh, Dynasty Pass, brand new for this year with the UDK Plus. But here's the real headline: there is we want you in the listener league, and we are giving away a listener league spot, so you can play with Jason, Mike, myself in the upcoming 2021 listener league. Uh, anybody who pre-orders before March 1st, you are entered to win a listener league spot. That is ultimate draftkit.com. And, uh, you know, those are highly coveted. The they opportunity are. to lose to us is highly coveted. I, mm -hmm. I saw one last year on eBay, $600,000. <laughs> we should put them on eBay. All of them. All <laughs> yes, of them should um, go on eBay right we now. We are retracting this contest. <laughs> Um, but if you want it, go to ebay.com slash the fantasy footballers. Look, I know Brooks can handle giving up 600 K, but I mean, what you yeah, just said is we're giving Brooks away $600,000 can finally get in a league with us. All right. Twitter at the FF ballers. If you want to follow us on social media, you can watch the show. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell presented by pristine auction. All right, buy or sell. We're doing an Ayukin edition. Oh. Ayukin! Oh, yeah. All right, Brandon Ayuk, buy or sell a top 24 wide receiver in 2021. Oof. I'm excited about this one because I, I just think that there's some debates to be had with Certainly. Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, George Kittle. Who's going to play quarterback? How good are the 49ers? All of those things. So I will I will hand uh, the microphone off to you guys first, and then I'll weigh in. Go well, ahead, Jay. So obviously he had, uh, and I don't I don't know that a lot of I don't know that everybody realizes what an electric rookie season he had. He was absolutely fantastic. If it wasn't for Justin Jefferson, I think you know Brandon Ayuk would be really looked at as a as a special rookie season. You know, from week seven through week fifteen, he didn't have a single game where he wasn't in the top twenty four at wide receiver, which is not common for any wide receiver, let alone a rookie. Uh, so I think top twenty four is a, a really good line because his talent obviously can get him there. The coach, the offensive system with Shanahan can get him there. Um, he was darn near close to there um, this season. Points per game, he was wide receiver 17 as a rookie. But I tend to I tend to really dislike the 49ers um, fantasy options. I do. I, do. I, I know a, I do. You're a hater. Well, and the thing is, is I love Kyle Shanahan. I love the opportunity that players will have there. But the problem is it's very pluralized. Uh, it's players. It's we don't know which running back. We don't know which wide receiver. The only one that is consistent is is George Kittle. And when we look at this rookie season, you know, he had his big breakout game in week three. That was the second game that George Kittle actually missed. 
Um, George Kittle got back in week 16 when all of a sudden that streak of top 24 performances from Brandon Ayuk was over. And then you had Debo missing, uh, you know, some games in there too. I think that if you've got a healthy triad there of those three options, uh, George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk, and Debo Samuel, um, I, I think it will be difficult for Brandon Ayuk to be top 24. So I'm, I'm going to sell. I'm going to put him on the outside of the top 24, but I do think it's a very good line, a good barometer of over-under. Mike, do you want to weigh in first? I... I, I agree with a lot of things Jason's saying. I I would probably still have him inside the top 24 when you're talking end of season. Uh, like He'll have enough big games, I believe, that he will get into the top 24. The, the question will be that consistency. Can you see anything like that stretch that he had this last year where he was fantastic? Once Debo and Kittle really are running out there with him, and, and I don't even know who's going to be the quarterback for, for this team. Is, is it going to be Garoppolo or are they going to look elsewhere? I think Ayuk is a very talented player, so I will bet on the talent that by the end of the year he'll be a top 24 guy, but you you should not draft him like he's locked and loaded that he's going to be this every single week. I agree with the sell that Jason brought up and the reasons why. You know, we kind of talk about Debo and being unable to stay healthy. This could be a San Francisco problem. It wasn't like Brandon Ayuk had an unscathed year, uh, missed week one and week 17 with injuries, and George Kittle was out. I I just don't have enough confidence that it'll be consistent enough to get him in there. Very talented player. Um, still believe that the team uh, wants to run the offense uh, through Debo uh, on the outside, but if Debo can't stay on the field, Ayuk will See, be I, happy I to believe, oblige. I can't believe Jason is selling this with his well-known hatred of of Debo thinking that Debo never plays football then it's just Ayuk and George Kittle well that you know it, it I I was surprised that that wasn't the immediate retort <laughs> when I said if these three guys are together because even in my own head when I said well if these three guys are together it's gonna be difficult I'm like are those three guys gonna be together I don't know but who gets drafted first yeah, that's does the question Debo, does Debo Samuel or Brandon Ayuk get drafted wow. higher next season because I bet they're super close. I bet they are super super close. That's the that's the way it feels right now in the in the space where I think Ayuk might go a couple picks ahead of Debo because uh, people are burnt. I mean that, they, they get burnt by the injuries. That really tends to happen with some of these guys where, you know, the 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 Robert Woods, uh, Cooper Cup, you know, uh for years the Adam Thielen, Stefan Diggs, like when when there's two guys on the same team um, they tend to, where you're not sure who's better for, they just go next to each other. And it's like, um, I wish that there was a round or two separation here. And then I would use the tried and true method of grab the cheaper Best option. value. Would you? Yeah, you I would. I would. You would take Debo. Like, let's say there, it's, if uh, Debo was it's, two rounds later than Ayuk, I would, I would definitely take Debo. But what about one? I, I, well, I'll put Ayuk in the fifth and Debo in the sixth. Yeah, I would, I would probably do that because I would prefer, I mean, that, that's saying that I get to have a fifth round player. Um, on my team that, you know, I I always hated when I was looking at, okay, Kenny Galladay's dropping, and I I like the value of Marvin Jones late, but if I draft Kenny, then I, then I can't. I'm not grabbing both. So th it allows me to take a different player in that, you know, hypothetical fifth round that will uh, open up for me grabbing uh, Debo a round later. All right. It'll be interesting. I mean, I, I – I think both of these players, if they stay on the field, can be productive. They work well with the system. There was obviously a bit of a surprise when Ayuk went in the first round to San Francisco and they could have taken some other players, but I think it was because Kyle Shanahan saw that exact mode or uh, that exact kind of wide receiver that he was that looking for. The Packers had already drafted Jordan Love. He wasn't available. Yeah, that would have been the first choice of most, mm. most teams. Yes, good point. But also, uh, my biggest takeaway here is Jason sees Debo Samuel as a great value in the upcoming drafts. That is the headline. Yeah, mm. that's the article that he will. We all we that's always write headline. a few articles ourselves, and that'll be one of Jason's. He will be a great value on my draft board because if you can get him where he'll be ranked on my draft board, <laughs> I'll be like, oh, man, I can get so Debo in the eighth, now, ninth, just to, 12th. Just, just to comfort me, Jason, that is entirely based on availability, not ability, right? That is 100%. Debo's a great wide receiver when he's on the field, but he has had – uh, you know, I, we, we try our best to not uh, label guys as, as injury prone because they're injury prone until they're not. You know, it, so many examples of people that came into the league. Frank Gore, 
in the beginning of his career was labeled such an injury prone player. And then it was like, uh, he's the iron man. He's the, he's the infinity stone. And this happens with a lot of guys, but Debo's went all the way back to high school, to college, to the NFL. It's, it's been so consistent. And I just wonder if his body, because look at his play style, right? We, we gave him the man drop because the way he plays football is fearless and awesome. But maybe there's maybe there's some wisdom and fear of getting smashed by oncoming three hundred pound, uh, you know, superheroes. Get this man some plants. It, it well, Jones fracture was what started it. If you remember, he missed three games with yes. the Jones fracture from preseason, and then in week seven it was the hamstring, and then the attempted return, and then it was oh no, uh, we're done. Say goodbye to Debo. <clears throat> All right. That was buy or sell from Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. Um, I'd be curious, you know, are the uh, the Debo Samuel jerseys or the Brandon Ayuk jerseys going for more in those mm. weekly auctions? That's a good uh, question. The tantalizing uh, unknown of Brandon Ayuk's future, I think, is what will drive him up fantasy draft boards. All right, Pristine Auction. Use the code BALLERS. $10 credit. Uh, no news that we're going to get into right now. Uh, just these shocking stats. So let's kick it off. How'd you do that? Hi. It's actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. All right, shocking <laughs> that stats. That one you off guard over it, there. It did. It, it did. Me too. I, I totally forgot what it was going to be because that was a, that used to be, Hello, everybody. I know. I know. It, 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 that's what I was expecting, Mike. They, every time we get back to these episodes, um, the drops are, are a, a brand new surprise. Again. Yeah. All right. Shocking stats from the 2020 season. Let's start here with number one uh, related to running through the air, as we often say on the show. 2020 marked the fewest running back receiving fantasy points. Uh, since 2012, mm. since 2012, running backs averaged just 1.48 fantasy point uh, points per reception. Uh, running back receiving yards hit rock bottom, averaging 7.4 yards per reception. That's the lowest in the last decade. So they, even when they caught the ball, they weren't doing a whole lot with it. And yet, on the other hand, running backs averaged 0.66 fantasy points per rush, which is the highest in the last. 10 years. So when they were rushing the football this year, more efficient, more effective when they were catching the football, less efficient, less effective than in years past. Derrick Henry, stop, stop messing with our stats, man. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> you're throwing things off. You're making, you're making these pass catchers look bad. Well, and our, our main heroes of the, the running back receptions, I mean, they were hurt. Barkley was out. Christian McCaffrey was out. We're back, backup heroes and yeah, catching the ball. Washington was being stupid and not throwing Antonio the Gibson the ball more. Antonio you know, the Gibson? Do? Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Uh, yeah, yeah. CMC Barkley hurt, like you said. Um, we only had two running backs, Kamara and McKissick, that had 65-plus receptions. We had seven last year in 2019. Were you making that face, I was Mike? bracing. I was bracing. Uh, that wasn't a McKissick face? Well, oh, it was. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, four of the top seven in running back receptions were McKissick, Hines, Mike Davis, and Chase Edmonds. Yeah, that's part of the problem here is um, <laughs> that you, you, you really had journeymen and backups that were thrust into the pass catching roles more than what you usually see. But the real takeaway from me when I look at this stat of basically this was not a good year for receiving uh, at the running back position, and this was a great year, best in the last 10 years of fantasy points per rush attempt on the ground. And you say, okay, this is a bad year for the receiving and a the best year for running. And then you look at those two numbers and you go, okay, per reception, it was 1.48 fantasy points per reception. Per rush, it was 0 0.6 fantasy <laughs> points per rush. That's the best versus the worst, and it's so clear as day. This, this highlights how valuable running back receptions are because even in a down year it just beat the tar out of fantasy points per rush so that's that's why we that's why we want those three down backs we we value even receiving backs by themselves um you know JD McKissick's a perfect example he's not that good but he was he was a helpful tool for fantasy this past season 
Well, and we were even talking a bit yesterday about the profiles of some of these rookie running backs coming into the league, specifically um, Kenneth Gainwell and his electricity oh, in the passing game. And it's always interesting to try to map out where those players can go and have an Austin Eckler-like impact on a team because of the value per touch that happens in the receiving game, although it did go down a lot last year because the Avengers were all injured, I guess. Yeah. So, all right, here's another shocking stat uh, titled, Oh, How the Mighty Have Fallen. I really don't like this one. Oh, I this, feel, this oh, one I love is it. I feel like it was just a, a, a setup from the beginning here by our editor-in-chief, Kyle. Fact one, Michael Thomas had 55, 55! targets on the season which is great for the show, not for Michael Thomas. Uh, fact number two, formal, former Cardinals uh, great Hakeem <laughs> Butler had one route run on the entire season. That's and, a sarcastic great. Yeah, and then fact three is that Hakeem Butler had more end zone targets than Michael <laughs> Thomas had on the entire season, <laughs> which is a way to say that Michael Thomas not only had just 55 targets, but he had zero uh, end zone targets not what, what you signed up for in the <laughs> yes. first round. Not what you hoped for. And was it enough of a gut punch? The Michael Thomas gut punch of 2020. Was it enough to damage draft stock, damage his future in the fantasy landscape? Well, it like, what's the just, temperature check on him? It wasn't just a gut punch. It was we got punched in the gut. So then we, of course, doubled over exposing our face to yeah. then a Shryukin uppercut because mm. Drew Brees is going to be gone. I mean, we haven't got the official word yet, but it was now you have the sting of last year, a guy really disappointing you, and now who's his quarterback? Is it Taysom Hill? Who uh, uh, Taysom Hill did flash and looked like, okay, maybe he can be competent, but he's not going to be Drew Brees. Is it going to be Jameis Winston? Is it is it an unknown player? So when you combine... The, the the combo punches there, yeah, it definitely it it definitely hurt his draft stock and where he is in dynasty. Like right now, uh, you know, if if you're looking in the dynasty pass at the rankings, uh, I have Michael Thomas at seven, and he was a which it's it's really not that bad. I mean, <laughs> seven. Well, he was the consensus, solid, but he was like number one or number or two on most uh most dynasty boards at the wide receiver position last year. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't take much away from Michael Thomas uh, this year. It's much more about the quarterback situation. I think he was – he's he's awesome. He was playing through serious, serious injuries this season because he thought it was going to be Drew Brees' last. And, um, you know, he's he's getting some of those worked on this offseason. It's just a matter of who his quarterback is. And let's say it's, uh, you know, uh, let's say it's not Drew Brees. I still expect Michael Thomas to finish wide receiver six through eight somewhere in that, you know, mid wide receiver one for the next like five, six seasons in a row. And so my dynasty outlook on him is not f as faded as, oh, no, we don't know whose quarterback is going to be. So it's going to it's going to be the worst. And he's going to be a nobody. He had a bad season this year. Now he doesn't have a quarterback. This season was just injuries, in my opinion. Well, it reminds me of a couple things. One, it, it makes me think about discussions that we had last year about his future quarterback situation and the way that we thought about players, even like Juju, who will obviously not be in Pittsburgh most likely, but we still had the thought of like, okay, Big Ben's not long for the NFL. It also reminds me of DeAndre Hopkins when he was in Houston and when they were rotating through different quarterbacks. Oh, man, yeah. It, it's like you need uh, it's you need two keys to fire the torpedo, you know. And if if you don't have the quarterback, you can't get to that number one, right? You can get like Jason said, six through eight every single year. That's the same way we would grade out DeAndre Hopkins. But the math to put Hopkins at number one involved Deshaun Watson, right? And, and until we know what that second uh, dependency is at quarterback for Michael Thomas, I don't think that he's going to be. You know, he was so far and away the number one for everybody. This past year, it wasn't close. There wasn't anybody making a right. different decision at, at wide receiver. You guys want a uh, a shocking stat off the cuff here? Uh, who had a higher completion percentage, Drew Brees or Taysom Hill? Oh man, I'm gonna guess based on the setup <laughs> that it's Taysom Hill. It was. It was Taysom Hill at seventy three percent. I mean, that's <laughs> okay. Uh... I'm not going to translate into Drew Brees. It's just, that's a funny stat. 
You heard it here first. Taysom Hill is one of Mike's favorite quarterbacks heading oh, into 2021. Oh, my man. If Taysom Hill is a starting quarterback for the Saints, then yes, he will be one of my favorite fantasy quarterbacks heading into draft season. Before we jump into some more shocking stats, I want to thank today's... <laughs> so terrible. <laughs> Darnell Anderson would hate that. Uh, I want to thank today's sponsor, Headspace. Ladies and gentlemen... Uh, it's uh, so it's been a stressful time. It's been a stressful last year. Things right now are a little bit crazy. Check out Headspace. Getting care uh, or taking care of your, your 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 the the mental health. It is important. And Headspace, they're all about meditation. Headspace is one of the only meditation apps advancing the field of mindfulness and meditation through cl clinically validated research. Whatever the situation, they can help you feel better. Are you overwhelmed? Headspace has a three-minute SOS meditation for you. Do you need help falling asleep like so many of us do? They have wind-down sessions. Their members swear by it. For parents, uh, we all got crazy kids, and those crazy kids are at home a lot right now. There are sessions you can do, mindfulness sessions you can do with your kids. Just 30 days of Headspace can lower stress by 32%. Or 32%. We all have Headspace. We've all signed up. I, we have all used it. It is incredibly simple. You will not have a problem getting into it. Uh, they they are backed by 25 published studies on its benefits. Benefits 600,000 five-star reviews, over 60 million downloads. You deserve to feel happier in Headspace as meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash footballers. That's headspace.com slash footballers for one free month uh, trial with access to Headspace full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now. Head to headspace.com slash footballers today. All right, our third shocking stat is titled Mr. Limited. Mr. Oh. Limited. Seattle, despite being 12-4, and four, finished 27th in third down conversion percentage. Uh, that is the lowest for a 12-win team since Peyton Manning's final noodle-armed year oh, of 2015. Man. <laughs> Russell Wilson completed just 60% of his passes on third down. Players who had more fantasy points on third down than Russell this, Wilson. This, these are fun stats here. Mike Williams had more fantasy points on third down than Russell Wilson. That seems, that seems impossible. Uh, when did he start playing quarterback? The superior third down Russell. Uh, Russell Gage had more fantasy points on third down <laughs> than Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Uh, Gardner Minshew had more third down fantasy <laughs> points than Russell Wilson. So uh, this has been the... What? This is no. the this is the the spiraled universe of Seattle. This is simultaneous good and bad at all times. This is simul it's Russ crushing on first and second down. That is what it is mostly. <laughs> well, but, they certainly uh, still had third downs, and he, they didn't convert on them at a percentage that was okay, that was good. Um, but is this a fluke for Russell's splits? What uh, what do you think about this stat? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, here's Hawks. the thing. The uh, you know. The, uh, some was made people figured out what was going on with DK Metcalf halfway through the season there was a shift in in play calling to run the ball more but DK wasn't able to just surprise everybody and get over the top of everybody in single coverage as the season went on and you know as as f the future goes on I'm going to take the longevity of history we have with Russell Wilson I'm going to assume they will fix this they got Obviously, they replaced their offensive coordinator, so they're going to have new designs. And while I think that they are going to be focused more on the run than the pass, it will be completely different uh, than than what the other teams figured out last year. And I think it will open things up for him on third down. He's not been a bust third down player for his career, but this year it, it really did seem like they were put in bad third down positions and Every time you watched these games where you just assume he's going to get it done, it never he never seemed to get it done in those important moments. It was a real surprising uh, version of Russ this year. Two questions for you briefly before we go to another shocking stat. Number one, will Russell Wilson make another Super Bowl appearance in his career? And number two, is, is he a Seahawk for the next five years? <laughs> yeah, he's been going on different talk shows and saying, I don't know if Seattle wants to be back. You have to ask them. He wants to throw the ball. He does. And they don't want him to, which mm. is weird. 
I think they I think they do make another Super Bowl appearance. I I think when you have a great head coach, which I believe Pete Carroll is a great head coach, a solidly run organization and a great quarterback, you have a chance. And I was shocked when when Russ came out and said, "Oh, I'm going I want to play another 10, 15 years." It's like, "What are you talking about?" I thought Russ was like 36 is where I like mentally cuz he's just been, you know, in the league for so long. Yeah. But he's, I think he's 32. He's got enough years left of prime football ahead of him. Where I, I think they, I think they make another Super Bowl. Yeah, it's, I. Uh, it's possible, but I, I'll take the field. Is he um, avoided in all fantasy drafts for you, or is there a value point where you're willing to do the the dance every year? Because here, here's the funny thing. I feel like when people walk into Pete Carroll's office and they suggest things to him, I'd like to throw the ball more. I want a different offensive coordinator. I want to do this. I want to do that. I feel like he just pulls out a piece of paper and it has the team's record on it from the last <laughs> 10 years. And he just points sure. it and he doesn't say anything. And he says, uh, don't let the door hit you on the way out. See you and later. Every time Russell's like, I want to throw the ball more. He just holds up a picture of the, uh, the Super Bowl interception but, in the end zone, but he's oh. real, po but he's real positive about it. He carries a positive guy. He's smacking he's blowing that bubbles gum. He's like, during it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, well, let's let's check that out. Let me look at these stats. I mean, twelve and no. four, twelve yeah. and four, and yet they let go of their offensive coordinator, and then there's these offseason rumblings. I don't speaking, know. It's speaking weird. Speaking of rumblings, I know we're we're talking stats here, but it's we're in dynasty season rumor bills are flying around did you guys see the the reports that chris carson is not expected back i did not see Seattle that. seahawks yes yeah, yeah the, like this is why uh you know i've it's been really me whispering it into the oh, dark but you're talking nausea uh <laughs> oh no not just nausea but but like looking at the situation right now oh my gosh not it Najee harris lands on the seattle It'd seahawks be, it, oh uh, man oh, that'd be oh, marshawn I'm, lynch 2.0 <laughs> I will be streaking through my neighborhood to, to alert the police. <laughs> Only uh, a man with the first pick in his rookie <laughs> draft will be doing that. But no, I've been saying, you know, like people are saying, well, who can you trade for right now that you have to give up nothing to, but there's huge potential upside. Do you guys have any faith that the Seahawks could move into next year and it's their first round pick, former first round pick, Rashad Penny as their main running back? Faith, no. Hope, yes. I was a huge Rashad Penny believer. I mean, I, I absolutely loved Rashad Penny. I, I truly believe he was on already he was, on. He the, was breaking out. He right was on the, the way injury. to break out, and then he got injured in in uh you know a very unfortunate injury for a running back. And but they, if if he's the main guy going into next year, I I will get be. I will get trapped. I he will can't just, be. He can't be. No, there's no, there's a zero percent chance the team is going to make him the number one guy going into next year. If they let Chris Carson go, they'll sign a free agent, veteran, or they will draft somebody in the fifth, sixth round to compliment at a minimum. I mean, they've piecemealed together their running back core due to injury for years. So going into the season, going into the season with like Carson and Penny is already like somehow a gamble due to injury. Right. I just can't see a world where Rashad Penny is coming off the catastrophic injury that he had. Well, but he's not. I mean, he has, he's now had a whole year. Sure. Yeah. I mean, look, we'll see what happens. There's a world where he's being drafted as their starter. Yeah. And that's going to be a, you know, close your eyes, make the draft pick, you know, right. just because it's worth a lot if they're, if their philosophy is running the ball. So maybe it just took a little time and Jason's Rashad Penny dreams can come true. Oh, oh I couldn't <laughs> handle it. <laughs> All right. Red zone warriors is our fourth shocking stat here in 2020. Three players had double-digit touchdowns inside the red zone. So remember the specifics there, inside the red zone. Devontae Adams had 14 inside the red zone. Adam Thielen, 13. Travis Kelsey, wow. 10. Uh, that is the most uh, total players doing that since 2015. Oh, In fact, we had, that was. we had none of them last year. Yeah, 2015, you had Allen Robinson, Brandon Marshall, Eric Decker, Tyler Eifert, Jordan Reed. Oh, baby. The target monster himself, mm -hmm. Rule 86 in effect. Um, but last year there were none. And so the year before, Eric Ebron and Devontae Adams did it. Um, Jarvis Landry and Jimmy Graham the year before that. It's been, you know, it's been a while since we've seen a lot of players do it. Pick two players other than Adams, Thielen, and Kelsey. So you can't, no repeats. But two players that could do it in 2020. 
21. We'll do a mini draft of Ooh. two players that we think could do it. And um, then I'll start because I want the first pick. <laughs> All right. Uh, the, the, the Thielen one, it still shocks me because I've, every time I forget how many touchdowns Thielen had last year. Yeah. I, I will go with uh, my first one is going to be Mark Andrews. I will go with Mark yeah. Andrews tied in for the Baltimore Ravens. Okay. Um, he that was is, a clear one one Was he? Okay, yeah, so that's it, who was your number one. On my uh, list, one? he was my one one yes. All right, so uh, who's going next? Uh, the list has me on there, so I okay. will go. And I am going to select Calvin Ridley of the Atlanta Falcons. I think okay. that he could absolutely do that. That's good. Yeah, I yeah, like that pick. I get that. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, I, I do think this, you know, when you're talking inside uh, the nope, 20. Your pick is already in the dock. Brooks has selected Tyler oh, no. Lockett for you, Jason. Um, uh, no, thank you. We're talking <laughs> Debo Samuel. inside. We're talking inside the twenty yard line in the yeah. red zone. Um, so I I do think that tight ends uh, are probably the the most likely outcome here. I mean, we saw Eric Ebron do it, so I'll, I'll take George Kittle. I'll take a healthy season and have him come down with double digit touchdowns next year. And at wide receiver, look there there was magic happening towards the end of the year, and and nobody has more one yard touchdowns oh yeah mike he was gonna evans. be my next pick so yeah. i will go mike evans for the inside of the red zone double digit touchdowns when either godwin or antonio brown or both possibly move on from the team all right mike have, it's back to you uh i have some some like evans was on my list and cooper cup is on my list because that i think i still think cooper cup is good but i'm gonna i want to throw out a name here uh that's you know, it's projecting, and I think that this could happen. I think that this player could come down with 10 touchdowns inside the red zone. I'm going to take TJ Hawkinson from the Detroit Lions mm. as uh, the primary go-to weapon. Jared Goff likes himself a tight end from, from time to time, and I think that Hawkinson could get it done. All right, I will, uh, I will try not to go back to the tight end well here, so I will take a wide receiver, and I will go with a free agent wide receiver. I will go with a wide receiver where I don't know where they're going to play, but I know how big they are, and his name is <laughs> Kenny Galladay. Mm. Kenny Galladay, All right. uh, I believe it was 2018 that he was one of the few double-digit touchdown fellas. Wherever so, Kenny uh, Galladay goes, I need Kenny Gainwell to be drafted, so we just have... Oh, you got double Kenny G. So we got Kenny and Kenny. Smooth route, smooth smooth runs. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. I was really hoping that maybe we had some smooth routes on the show today, but apparently we don't. <laughs> oh, ah. oh, Kenny G in the house. So right. we, we didn't get smooth. to play that last year, and that was so disappointing. Soundboard is asleep at the wheel over there. All right. So Mark Andrews, Calvin Ridley, George Kittle, Mike Evans, solid pick there. T.J. Hawkinson, Kenny G. All right, all right. Um, we'll be sure to check back in on this trip. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, let's go with our fifth shocking stat titled Under Pressure. Oh. Under Pressure. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, uh, ding, ding, ding. Yeah, when I hear under, when I see Under Pressure, somehow I still think of the, up. I still think of the Billy Joel song. What? I know. It's not right. I'm not what? saying it's right. I just do. What? Sorry, I'm sorry. That's that's absurd. That's not, I, I listened to way too much Billy Joel as a kid. Mm -hmm. All right, Justin Herbert was the only quarterback whose passer rating under pressure was higher than his total passer rating. He had a, a 99 passer rating under pressure, 98. Impressive. Not under pressure. Now is that because he was under pressure on like 85 percent of his dropbacks? Uh, yeah, due to the Pro Football Focus's 32nd ranked offensive line in front of yes, him. Yes, due to 32nd that. best. Yeah, 32nd best. The The nice thing is, is it, from what I understand, the the Chargers are going to save a lot of money by disintegrating all offensive line because they realize that he's better. He's better under pressure. Why have an O-line? Let it go. Uh, most completions under pressure in the NFL – he led the NFL with 15 passing touchdowns on third down. He still was uh, credited. His receivers were credited with 10 drops uh, on under pressure throws. Still had wow. a 99.4 passer rating. He, he, so he's good. Now, do you guys so, take this is just this is kind of a fluky thing, one time thing, or is this like you get Justin Herbert some protection up front, and you're you might see a 40 touchdown season from him. 
I think he's certainly capable of that type of a season. I also know that fantasy points come in lots of different ways, and one of them is running away from people and running down the field and um, improvisation. And, you know, Russell Wilson has made a lot of uh, fantasy players happy and evading defenders. And, and so I don't know what that equates to exactly for the fantasy future of Justin Herbert. I think it's very easy to take the quick reaction of uh, no Austin Eckler running the ball around, or he had to run a lot. Touchdown percentage was up there. He's got to regress, but is that a bad, is that a bad way to go? I mean, we wanted Baker to get an O-line and it changed their whole team. Uh, I, what we saw, I mean, what we saw from Justin Herbert, says to me that he will, without a shred of doubt in my mind, have a 40-touchdown season. Uh, not not necessarily this year, but as as his career goes, his arm was unbelievable. It's it's up there with uh, Josh Allen and, and Pat Mahomes. The ball he throws is just the – it is a thing Biceps, of absolute – Biceps, triceps, beautiful. forearm, <laughs> Beauty. fingers, lats. Um, so, but, but I will say, you know, if we're talking about what – what's his prognosis for next season, I think that they are going to have a better team. Um, I think they're going to have a better offensive line, but they're going to have a much, much better defense. They had so many great, you know, Derwin James is all world and they'll have him back next season, uh, presumably. And, you know, I don't think he's going to need to do as much. So I'm, I'm really having a hard time looking at Justin Herbert's 2021 because I think what we saw was fully real, uh, passed every analytic test, passed every film test. I think he's completely the real deal. He will only get better, um, but statistically, fantasy football-wise, uh, he ran the ball much less in the second half of the season, um, which is you know that you'd expect that as he progresses as a quarterback but that's not good for fantasy so uh, I do have a hard time um figuring out where I think he's so, gonna land next year let, let me make this difficult I will go out on a limb here and I will say I will definitively I would definitively rather have Justin Herbert as my fantasy quarterback than Jalen Hurts oh Woo very interesting reaction and I well, if Jalen Hurts is the known starter, uh, if Carson Wentz is traded, I would definitively rather have Jalen Hurts. And as I, would I. And it's it's stupid, and I don't like it because clearly Justin Herbert is the better quarterback. But for fantasy, rushing is king at quarterback, and and the baseline, the consistency will end up being higher. The the bigger blow up games will be higher. Uh, I'll I'll take I'll take the one that hurts. Oh, there we get that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, shocking stat number six. About to get that bag. You ready for this? Oh yeah. From weeks one through five, Curtis Samuel had thirty four fantasy points. Mm. That is uh, that's not good. That's wide receiver sixty one. From week that's, seven that's on, high for thirty four points. <laughs> yeah, from week seven on, including his buy. He was the wide receiver 10 with as many wide receiver one weeks as Stefan Diggs and twice as many as Justin Jefferson. He was good. He was oh, and, and he's getting his mind. That hurt. You right hurt. You, you could tell that hurt me to say that out loud. Um, man, this is, this is a Kyle Borg special. Curtis Samuel is one of the Borg yeah. guys. Yeah. I really don't like how much control he has over our show right now. Uh, manufactured touches, second most third down touches among all wide receivers. There was no Christian McCaffrey, but Curtis Samuel came on in a big way. He saw the money bags, uh, the, the new contract. Where's he going to go in free agency? Will he matter for fantasy? Uh, my projection, my prediction for Curtis Samuel is to land in, uh, Washington. But Ooh. what do you guys think about, Curtis Samuel's future because is he going to get paid enough to where he's 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 part of an offense um enough of an offense to be relevant I would I would say that um no I don't think he's going to get paid well enough to guarantee that he's a major part of an offense uh, my outlook for him is I'm really really excited to see where he signs for Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore uh, you know, if this year taught us anything, it is that we want the two targets. We don't want three targets. Right. We want two targets. 
Uh, target number one, target number two. At all across all positions, are there two guys we're throwing the ball to, or are there three? And when he leaves, and he leaves just Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore to split that pie up, it'll be delicious. Now, obviously, the the location that you brought up, um, Washington would be one of the only spots where you could argue there's only two guys there. If if it's him and Scary Terry, although Logan Thomas really was a Major I don't. Target. I don't like what's going on over here, Jason. You are discounting the number two target on that team, Jason. Jason, I will not have. I will not. I will not stand for this. He, look, Gibson's great, but he's not going to be in the top two targets. It would happening. be. It would be bad. For, I mean, it. It'd be bad for Gibson if Curtis Samuel landed in Washington because I think they'd, would. they'd use him the way. I mean, Curtis Samuel has utility beyond you know lining up in the slot. You can you hand him the ball into rounds. Short area targets, it would be bad. If it's Sounds McKissick, like a guy Gibson, that Kyle and Shanahan Samuel. would want just to muddy up the waters even more. <laughs> oh my gosh, Curtis Samuel to the 49ers? Absolutely. Oh. oh, we can use him behind the line of scrimmage. He can carry the ball. I mean, it's a You're perfect right, though. Shanahan You're right. guy. And would be every fantasy owner uh, would be like, I hate the Niners. I hate. I oh, hate. Percy Harvin coming out of retirement at that point. <laughs> exactly. Does get Percy Harvin in there. Tavon Austin's probably a free agent. Didn't they sign him at one point? I mean, let's just keep him coming. I think the uh, I do think that Curtis Samuel is going to matter. I uh, I because I'm, I'm going to bet on his talent. I mean, he's not going to get Allen Robinson money, but I think he'll get a good contract. You know, he could be. Uh, um, oh crap! His name is escaping me. He went to the Raiders. He it didn't pan out because he got hurt. The Tyrell Williams. Um, yeah, like he could get a contract like that and and go and be a piece like. I'll throw out the the New England Patriots as as a potential destination. He seems like a player that Bill Belichick would be able to maximize and 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 use him to to create mismatches. And I and I'd be interested if he went to the Patriots. Is he playing yeah. quarterback there? Maybe because <laughs> I think that's that's the only way he'll have fantasy production as a Patriot. All right, uh, let's go with one more shocking stat. We'll do a couple mailbag questions too. Juju Mapletron and Sir drops a lot. That's that's what he chose to <laughs> to title this. I find that insulting for Devante or uh, Deontay. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers wide receiver scored the second most combined fantasy points in the NFL. They had three wide receivers in the top twenty-four. Juju was eighteen, Claypool nineteen, Deontay twenty-two. Get one out of there. Mm -hmm. Get one out. It's my rule. <laughs> Two they, targets. They managed to total only... F Here's the shocking stat. They totaled only four 100-yard receiving games, which is uh, a combined fewer than uh, Cole freaking Beasley. <laughs> so, uh, with Juju out of the way, do you expect Deontay and Maple trying to both easily be top 24 wide, wide receivers next year? I do. I do, too. I I, I would absolutely. De Deontay Johnson is just going to get so many targets. Chase Claypool was on my list for uh, the, the when we were doing that incredible red zone warrior draft yeah. uh, of someone who could just – he could pull down 10 touchdowns inside the red zone. Like He was a rookie, and he scored more than 10 touchdowns. That doesn't happen. I thought you were going Chase Claypool when you were pre-talking about TJ Hawkinson. I've, I was sure that Chase Claypool was the name coming out. Yeah, I mean, if, if these two targets are the main receivers, assuming Big Ben is still there, uh, certainly they will be top 24. I, I don't see how they won't. Like like the stat talked about, the, the Steelers wide receivers as a whole scored the second most combined fantasy points. The pie is large. Split it two ways and <clears throat> eat up. <laughs> Uh, one way too. If you split it one way, that it's oh, still even good. better. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> we can go full obesity over you're, here. Look, you're gonna get sick. You want an obese wide receiver? Sick core, with fantasy points. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. All right, let's jump into the mailbag for a few questions. Oh, mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. All right, if you have a question for the show, we're here to help. TheFantasyFootballers.com. Visit the site. Click the submit a question button or you can also dial the voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB. All right. First question, dynasty rookie draft question from Aaron in San Diego. Hey, ballers, I'm in an eight-man dynasty, two-quarterback league. Okay. Is it crazy to take Trevor Lawrence with the one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wait. Rookie only? No. 
I imagine this is the rookie draft. Yeah, yeah the rookie draft. Because uh, he's he, eight they man have... dynasty, two quarterback. I have Watson, Wentz, and Jimmy G already. Okay, all right. Okay, I apologize. I thought it was saying like the one on one startup. Can I call my shot? And that would be insanity. Uh, it's yes, not crazy agreed. at all at the one on one in a no. in a two quarterback league. What about Especially the fact that you... it's an eight man league and there's probably some depth out there? A little bit more depth at quarterback. Well, but they don't have depth. Their depth is Carson Wentz and Jimmy Garoppolo, two guys who may not even be starting quarterbacks in, in 2021. Seems necessary so, then. I would be taking Trevor Lawrence. or it, And I get that Trevor Lawrence is the next big thing, but uh, there is a world where Justin Fields is a better fantasy quarterback than Trevor Lawrence. I know Lawrence has mobility, but Fields is, is a very dynamic yeah, but have you at the have you position. seen Trevor Lawrence's hair though? You know, I have. I mean, I we got have. Michael Bolton in the backfield right here. Uh, I mean, this is looks, looking like Sir Lawrence. I I get it. And, All right, and Aaron, if if you're sitting there at the one one, you think it's crazy. Look at who has the one hundred two, and look at their quarterbacks and say he they want Najee Harris. They they need a running, but they're not going to take Trevor Lawrence. And you know, do a little swip swap. Uh, get get another piece for it. Get Jason. your guy. Are you going to take Trevor Lawrence here? But what if the Seattle Seahawks draft Najee Harris in the first round? <laughs> I would take. Oh man, that that becomes really. Then I would trade to the one hundred and two, get extra pieces, and let the chips fall where they may. All right, uh, Jeff wants to know who in the NFL has the best jerseys, in your opinion, Ooh. and who has the worst. Man. Um. The best jerseys. I love, I love those baby or the uh, the powder blue, the Chargers. Okay, those ones are are fabulous. Uh, let's see, I mean, I'm a pretty big fan of the the newest Browns jerseys. To be honest with you, mm -hmm. uh, I like those quite a bit. I like the Vikings jerseys quite a bit. Sure. Worst, uh, I honestly it was funny as I, I loved the Washington football team's look this year too. <laughs> it was, yeah. it, it worked out for them. I also like. Is, uh, is there any? Have they been talking at all about what potential mascot they're going to go with? Or are they going to stick with the football they've, team? The last I heard, and I don't know if this is a this certainly is not official, but the last thing that I remember hearing is that they were contemplating one more year, one more year as the Washington as football, the football team, team to give them more time. Which just builds so much anticipation for whatever and it will be we're disappointed with <laughs> as the it doesn't take two years to come up with a mascot, does it? No, uh, no, it doesn't. I don't think so. Uh, least favorite is there a least favorite that jumps out in your head? Uh, I was trying to. It, I do you like was, the new Falcons jerseys or do you hate them? I I'm both fine, love and them. hate them. It depends on which which jersey because I I think it was their uh, their their black jerseys I really liked. I don't love the Broncos jerseys. I wish they went back to the old school colors or, or look for the Broncos. Uh, I'm not and, a huge fan of the bone jerseys for the Rams. Oh, uh, for the Rams? I, they should have like just it. gone white, man. Those would have been like, so exactly. nice. And it just I'm, looks like they, they put it in with some black clothes in the laundry. <laughs> it's like, oh, darn it. Yeah, you didn't wash the whites with the whites. Yeah, it just became a little dirty. And That's true. I just I love color rush unis. I, when when they're head to toe, just one blocked out color. I I really like that. Those Bronco the color rush Broncos jerseys look good. When you're all orange, yeah, that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. All right, uh, Instagram question from MB Payne eleven. Can I get into your guys' dynasty league? I really want to get one going, <laughs> but I don't have enough people. FootClanLeagues.com, my man. Yep. You just go to FootClanLeagues.com. That's where the supporters of the show at Join the Foot, they can make leagues, meet people, play online, even local. Uh, and, you know, if you need a, a player to fill that you know is going to be good, so many thousands of leagues have spawned up from FootClanLeagues.com. So that's where that's where you go. We have we have waiting lists upon waiting lists with, with you know, the co-owners on almost every team. So we're locked up. Oh, you you were just you were giving him a formal decline on his in asking to come into our league. Yeah, the, in the kindest way I could. Um, Instagram question from uh, Jono Etel. Uh, with the NFC East so terrible this past year, which team rises out of the ashes next year to outshine expectations? Um, I mean, if, I, with if, Dallas, makes sense. 
Dallas does make sense. But if, if Washington, Washington is a quarterback away. To me, and just competent quarter. I'm, I I love the story of Alex, like Smith. a Case Keenum away. Yeah, if you put if you put Case Keenum, like Minnesota Vikings, Case Keenum on Washington, they're they're no doubt a playoff team that can make a run because they have they have offensive weapons that can get it done, and their defense is ferocious, man, just ferocious. Um, can they win um, with Mitch Trubisky? Hmm. As long as they tell Mitch that he has to stop throwing the ball so much and run around more. <laughs> okay. I think Trubis Trubisky can win if he uses his legs more. Trubisky's he, he, won a lot with the Bears. Uh, yeah. He made the playoffs. I mean, when you've got a great defense and you don't have to do much. But Heineke they, they, or Trubisky? Irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to take the Eagles on, the, on this question. I, I, I believe that the Eagles' defense is actually very, very good, and they were put in terrible positions this past season. If – Jalen Hurts takes a step forward, and they can build an offense around him that controls the clock and 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 all that. I I think they could be a good team next year. Yeah, I, I it's it's enough for me on the projecting the Eagles to do well. Train, I'm going to go <laughs> fully against them as basement dwellers this year. I think I will combine my my uh, disbelief of Hurts with my history of thinking they'd be something. Um, so it's anybody but the Giants was our answer. Oh well, yeah, I we think can the all Giants agree. finish ahead of Philly. That's that's my prediction. Oh, so, um, all right. Last one. Which player should be my keeper? Nick in New Jersey. Should I keep CMC with my sixth pick, or I'm sorry, with the sixth pick, mm -hmm. or Jonathan Taylor in the fifth round? Oh baby, the answer <sighs> is Jonathan Taylor. It's Jonathan Taylor. I mean, you get to take that sixth pick it's and Jonathan draft the player Taylor. and combine it with Jonathan Taylor. You're not getting you're not getting one of the top running backs at six. At you're, six? Yeah, you're probably getting because uh, you got one in the fifth round, man. <laughs> I mean, I don't you probably, need one of my first six picks. What, what if okay. I gave you Clyde Chubb, Nick Chubb? So you're saying J Josh Jacobs, Nick Chubb, Joe Mixon, and Jonathan Taylor? Yeah, I mean, I I get it. It's it's tough, especially. It's, but that, who's that the quarterback in Carolina? There are. Well, it's either Teddy Bridgewater or it's irrelevant because Christian McCaffrey is not on the team because he was traded for Deshaun Watson. <laughs> oh, my um, gosh. Oh, my gosh, if that happens. That's yeah, another that's, rumor going what, around. What uh, what round, Andy, what round do we have to put Jonathan Taylor in before it actually changes back to Christian McCaffrey? Third round? Because I think I would still, if it was a third-round keeper, I think I would still go with Jonathan Taylor. Third round, I would definitely go CMC. Fifth round, I'm st I I'm still a little torn because I who I had more points last year, Jason. I, oh come <laughs> on! Oh my more, gosh. Uh, okay, let's go with that. Let's go with that, Mike. Who per scores, game? Who scored more points per game last season? I didn't season? say that. I said who scored because more points. Because it's not close, and and we can't forget if Christian McCaffrey comes back there, you can't replace this with with you know oh I I have a bunch of good players. There's only basically him that can go out there and score so many more points in one slot on your fantasy roster. Yeah. It, it's really, it's it's not fair. I mean, so he I, played three games last year in our league format. He scored 29, 25, and 34. Um, yeah, Jason's talking me out of this. It, it's it's a great place to be. I mean, you're, you're in a, a spot where, you know, you're, you've got two great options. I, I think you probably end up going Jonathan. I'm Taylor, switching back. I'm switching back. I, oh, I you guys feel are like crazy. Philip Rivers is gone. We don't know the quarterback in Indianapolis, and it will matter, and especially in that pass catching realm. I mean, Jonathan Taylor could end up in a universe catching twenty passes total next year or less. Jonathan Taylor and that will for not 2, be two thousand yards. Uh, yeah, every no Jonathan. John, I I firmly believe that Jonathan Taylor could do that That's, if the team switches over to a Titan style. They all they're doing is is running and grinding out there. I think I think he could hit two K. Christian oh, McCaffrey man. averaged over twenty seven. If you think he can hit two K, you draft him ahead of Christian McCaffrey. Half PPR points per game this past season, which would be five points better than the next best Dalvin Cook. And Dalvin Cook was a positional difference maker. So it, it it's tough. It it is a tough one. Um, best of luck to you. But yeah, all right. Uh. That'll do it for today's episode of the show. We have a 10 things to remember from 2020 episode coming up next week. So make sure you subscribe, 
tune in. We always appreciate the reviews as well as you hang out with us this offseason and get ready for the 2021 fantasy football season. All right, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. If you want to watch us over there, we'll catch you later. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.